the 2012 rejection of mass ascension, humans have embraced the fear vibration. This created the threefold return, or three scenarios that are a direct result from people's unconscious choices. One or all of these scenarios will occur. Humanity still can change the outcome, but it is very unlikely now. Well, the question was, if Iran were to launch a nuclear attack on Israel, what would our response be? And I want the Iranians to know that if I'm the president, we will attack Iran. And I want them to understand that. Because it does mean that they have to look very carefully uh, at uh, their society. Because whatever stage of development they might be in their nuclear weapons program in the next 10 years, during which they might foolishly consider launching an attack on Israel, we would be able to totally obliterate them. That's a terrible thing to say, but those people who run Iran need to understand that because that perhaps will deter them from doing something that would be reckless, foolish, and tragic. Scenario 1, World War III. Hillary Clinton is quite possibly the most corrupt and evil person to ever run for President of the United States. Previous title holders were Lyndon B. Johnston, the man that quarterbacked the JFK assassination, and Dick Cheney, the man that quarterbacked 9-11. But these guys look like Boy Scouts compared to what Hillary has in mind. Anyway, if Hillary gets elected, then she will start World War III, no question about it. The system of bankers and global interests she works for want World War III. War is a banker's dream. They make a lot of money no matter who wins. These people are hardcore psychopaths. They have no empathy for any other human except their own family and even then some of them get killed if they don't play ball. Read my second book for the whole story and it will shock you. They want a war with Russia and China. And for the last 12 months, they have been doing everything they can to provoke those countries. They need Russia or China to shoot first. That way, they can justify a world war. And the sheeple will support it. But if those countries won't come to the party, they have armed and trained North Korea with a nuclear weapon as Plan B. If Russia or China don't fire first, they will get North Korea to do it in a false flag nuclear attack or maybe a dirty bomb attack on a major US city. They hope that the loss of hundreds of thousands of American lives will spur that nation and its allies into full-blown world war. Again, as I point out in my second book, they want to fulfill the playbook of their guru, Albert Pike who was a 33-degree Freemason, a Satanist, and founding member of the Ku Klux Klan. Pike spoke how they will create three world wars. The first and second were exactly as he said that they would be, so there is no reason to doubt that the third will follow his game plan. After 10 years or so of this total world war, the people will grow weary so when that time comes, the New World Order people will hold secret meetings with their enemy, China. They will promise China a backdoor deal to end the war. But to do so, China must stab their ally Russia in the back. In exchange, there will be an armistice. China will be given complete control of the Asia-Pacific, including Australia, Japan and New Zealand. Russia will be obliterated, fulfilling Nathan Rothschild's wish. The New World Order will control the rest of the world. All countries will live under a communist regime most resembling neo-feudalism. That is, a world of the very wealthy and the very poor, no middle class. The only reason why this has not already happened is because of one man, Vladimir Putin. Regardless of what you think you know about Putin, he is humanity's only hope of avoiding World War III and defeating the Illuminati New World Order. 
That is why the mainstream media are demonizing him. Trust me, when the media turn on someone, it is usually to turn public opinion against them because that person represents a threat to the establishment. Now, here is the big curveball. Mr. Obama does not want to give up his cushy life in the White House. So he may use a false flag or the upcoming earth changes to suspend the elections indefinitely. So chances are there will not even be an election in 2016 and Obama will be America's last president and that is not set in stone just yet. But small farm to see how that works out. Scenario 2 Islamic Caliphate on the 13th of May 1981, there was an assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II in St. Peter's Square at Vatican City. The Pope was shot and wounded by a Turkish hitman, Mehmet Ali Akkar. The Pope was struck four times and suffered severe blood loss. Akkar was apprehended immediately and later sentenced to life in prison by an Italian court. The Pope later forgave him for the assassination attempt. He was pardoned then by President Carlo Ciampi at the Pope's request and was deported to Turkey in June 2000. Akkar published his autobiography in Italy in 2013. His book is called I Was Promised Paradise. He claims that he worked for an Islamic black magic cult. The Grey Wolves invoke jinns, otherwise known as demons. That group has since morphed into ISIS. They have a prophecy that their messiah, the Mahdi, will bring about the destruction of the West and Christianity. In fact, Adkar says in his book, basically, it's really as if the world finishes in favor of a new era. Going to any mosque around the world, listen to what they say about the return of the Mahdi. They all say the same thing. Soon, very soon indeed, he is arriving. What does this mean? that a part of Islam is sharpening their weapons. The return of the Mahdi will bring bloodshed. If the Mahdi will not manifest himself, their will will materialize him. And in short, the Islamic fundamentalist will set fire to the whole Western world. So basically, this band of evil men hope to use black magic to invoke a powerful dark entity that they call the Mahdi. On the date 13 May 2017, the Islamists plan to unleash hell onto the Western world. That is why they have been slowly positioning their people into every Western country on the planet. The refugee crisis in Europe is the last stage of positioning the chess pieces. It is their specific intention to destroy the Vatican in Rome. Pope John Paul II strongly believed that this was the third prophecy of Fatima. The prophecy of Fatima was given to the world on May 13, 1917. The first two prophecies were released almost immediately However, the third prophecy was supposed to be released to the world in the 1960s, but for some reason it was kept sealed. On May 13, 1981, on the anniversary of the original prophecy of Fatima, Pope John Paul II was en route to St. Peter's Square to deliver the third and final prophecy. He was adamant that the people deserved to know what it contained. Before he could reveal the prophecy, however, he was shot down by Mehmet Ali Atkar. The Grey Wolves, now ISIS, did not want their plans revealed to the world. The third prophecy of Fatima contains their plans to destroy the Vatican and the Western world, and they want to do it on a special date of May 13, 2017. 
Many of the Vatican cardinals have secretly converted to Islam in hope to save their skins when the time of destruction comes. They want to be part of the New World Order One religion. A new Vatican II is under construction. It is called the Temple of the Work of the Holy Spirit and it is located in Palestrina just outside Rome. Its design was strongly influenced by the ancient sacred site at Gobekli Tepe, discovered in 1996. The Gobekli Tepe site was originally part of the Brotherhood of the Serpent, which I talk about in Book 1, connected to the priest class that became the Illuminati. This new temple is supposed to be for the One World Religion and will begin after the destruction of the Vatican. Notice how the inside looks like a mosque where followers kneel on their mats to worship. Construction is expected to be completed in 2019. Scenario 3 The Return of Nibiru I cover everything you need to know about Nibiru and its inhabitants in my first book, The Truth Chronicles, Book 1, Secrets of the Soul. However, here is a quick background. There is a planet that the ancients called Nibiru. NASA calls it Planet X. It's about 4.5 to 5 times the size of Earth. It belongs to a small solar system whose star is a dwarf star known as Nemesis. All up, the Nemesis system has seven planets and Nibiru is its largest and is the only one that's inhabited by beings called the Anunnaki. It has a dusty red atmosphere that creates wings on each side, so the ancients always depicted Nibiru as a winged disc. Nibiru passes the Earth around every 3,500 years or so. Sometimes it comes close, and sometimes it comes really close. The last time it came really close, it stripped the atmosphere of Mars, sending all of the Martian oceans into space. The Anunnaki that were based there had to evacuate and come to Earth. On Earth, it caused the Antarctic ice sheet in the south to break off, causing a global tsunami that the Bible refers to as the Flood of Noah. This flood and ensuing cataclysm was documented by dozens of native peoples all over the world. The Anunnaki monitored this whole episode from a satellite they put into orbit. This satellite is still in orbit and is now known as the Black Knight Satellite. As Nibiru approaches Earth, the gravitational forces begin to make their presence known. The much stronger gravity of Nibiru begins to heat up the Earth's core. Between the Earth's core and the outer layer, known as the crust, is an area called the mantle. The mantle is the most solid bulk of Earth's interior. It lies between Earth's dense superheated core and its thin outer layer, the crust. The mantle is about 2,900 kilometers or 1,802 miles thick and makes up a whopping 84% of the Earth's total volume. As Nibiru approaches, the mantle becomes superheated. This increases its viscosity until it becomes liquefied. As this happens, more and more volcanoes begin to become active. Earthquakes start to happen everywhere. Coral in the oceans becomes bleached and the weather patterns become severe and unpredictable. All of these events are referred to as Earth Changes. In April 2016, the Earth Changes became undeniable. A video put out by SOTT, or Sign of the Times, details each day of April and what Earth Changes happened on each day. When you see this, you will be left in no doubt that the countdown has begun.
Overnight, blizzard-like conditions in Massachusetts. Nearly 1,900 crew working through the night, clearing roads. Treacherous conditions leading to wreck after wreck. In upstate New York, a bus carrying three dozen college students flipping over and winding up upside down. Incredibly, there were no serious injuries. And in Connecticut, a tractor trailer sliding and jackknifing on this bridge. New Jersey police releasing this dramatic dash cam video. Trees snapping from heavy winds. In northern Pakistan, flash floods triggered by heavy rain have killed at least 55 people. An emergency operation has been launched to help thousands of survivors, dozens of whom have been cut off by a landslide in a mountain valley. Some 150 homes are said to have been destroyed. These earth changes are what I was told about 20 years ago, and they are happening right now. In April 2016, there were daily events for the whole month. These included volcanoes erupting, and even some that have not been active for over 70 years. Earthquakes shook many countries, wild weather was everywhere. It even snowed in Saudi Arabia. And of course, scientists revealed that 90% of the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Australia is now bleached, exactly as I spoke about 20 years ago. Back then, I correctly predicted that the signs would become more obvious after 2012, leading up to 2020. But I must admit now that it appears I got that timing slightly wrong. I now have good evidence that it will come much earlier than 2020. Earthquakes, volcanoes and wild weather will only get worse as Nibiru approaches. However, the real showstopper comes next. Meteorites. Nibiru passes through the Kuiper Belt, which is made up of billions of asteroids and chunks of ice. Some of these objects are as large as Pluto, while others are only the size of a pea. It will also pass through the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. As Nibiru passes through the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt, it drags millions of rocks and debris with it, trailing millions of kilometers behind it. As it approaches the Earth, many of the asteroids will be pulled toward the Earth due to gravity. So as a final sign of Nibiru's approach, we will witness mass meteorite showers. However, some of these meteors can weigh as much as 30 kilograms or 65 pounds of solid iron. So when they fall from space and hit the ground, they will explode. It would be like being in the middle of a World War I artillery barrage. 
there could be as much as one month of these meteor showers, but they will vary in intensity and in size and duration. Some days will be worse than others. A CIA insider has come forward and revealed that they have been tracking the Nemesis system since the They now know it will swing by very, very close to Earth this time, within about 50 million kilometres. This will cause the outer crust of the Earth to slip. As Nibiru passes at its closest point, the Earth crust will slip in the direction of Nibiru's gravitational pull. Thus, we can expect the slip will be from the South Pole to the North Pole. So all the land mass of Earth will move at about 1,400 kilometers per second, or 0.86 miles per second, south to north, then abruptly stop. The sudden stop will cause all of the oceans to slosh up, then go back in the opposite direction they came from. That will create a global tsunami of about 700 meters to 3,000 meters high or 2,296 feet to 9,850 feet high, traveling at 700 meters or half a mile a second. The water will slosh back and forth for several days. In fact, as Nibiru passes, it will stop the Earth's rotation. So one side of the Earth will be in complete darkness for three days and the other side will be in complete sunlight for three days. As Nibiru passes, the Earth will begin to rotate again as per normal. Basically, the Earth is going through a very rare process that will see most of the inhabitants of the planet die as a result of massive Earth changes. It is not the first time this has happened, and it will not be the last. The ancients knew that, and they tried to warn us. That is why they built their monuments in massive stone blocks. The reason why so many will die is because they do not want to know. They do not want to listen. They do not want to be part of one of the most exciting times in this planet's history, the Ascension. Humans were given a choice and they chose fear. We all live in a kleptocracy now. It is a term applied to a government that is in bed with the ruling class, in this case corporations, taking advantage of corruption to extend their personal wealth and political power. Corporate lawyers now write all of our legislation. They write the laws to benefit the corporations, protect them from prosecution, and maximize the ability to make a profit, even at the expense of the people and the environment. This is the world we live in, and most people are happy to turn a blind eye. That is how they got into control in the first place. The world is now so far gone down the corruption path, the self-entitlement mentality path, the selfishness path, the apathy path, and the willful ignorance path, that there is no way to bring it back. But not everyone on earth will die. Indeed, for those that do want to know, that do want to listen, that do want to participate, then welcome aboard and keep watching. What the Palladians were telling me that night was like myself, many others were being asked to not only preserve life, but to build a new way of life and to get the message out to as many people as possible. By following their instructions, I could be assured that the second vision, that of happy people in the hills, would be a reality, your reality, and that of anyone else that cares to join in.